The wind howled like a lone wolf through the towering pines of whispering woods. Two woodsmen, Ben and Thomas, trudged home, their breath puffing out in frosty clouds against the biting winter air. Snow, fresh and pristine, carpeted the forest floor, muffling the crunch of their boots. The skeletal branches of the trees clawed at the inky sky, a stark reminder of the harsh winter gripping the land. Every creature, from the chattering squirrels to the burrowing rabbits, had sought refuge in their cozy dens. Yet, Ben and Thomas pressed on, their faces etched with worry. Their village, nestled at the foothills beyond the forest, seemed a distant dream. Hunger gnawed at their bellies, and despair threatened to engulf them. They offered a silent prayer to St. Martin, the protector of travelers, for a swift journey home. Suddenly, a streak of light blazed across the night sky. A shooting star, a dazzling streak of white fire, arced across the heavens before disappearing behind the dense canopy of trees. Ben and Thomas stopped, mouths agape, a spark of wonder flickering in their eyes. A shooting star! Ben exclaimed, his voice raspy from the cold. Maybe it's a good sign. Thomas's eyes, usually clouded with worry, lit up with a hint of hope. Perhaps it marks a hidden treasure at the end of its path. Fueled by the possibility of fortune, they hurried towards the crash site their pace quickened by a flicker of excitement that chased away the winter chill. Deep within the woods, nestled amongst the snow-covered pines, they found not a chest overflowing with gold, but something even more unexpected. There, lying cradled in the snow, was a baby boy wrapped in a white cloth. A cloak of shimmering gold, embroidered with tiny silver stars, lay beside him. Around his neck, a golden chain held an amber pendant that glowed with a faint warmth. For a moment, Ben and Thomas stood transfixed. The scene was surreal, a picture of breathtaking beauty amidst the harshness of the winter. Then, reality set in. What do we do? Thomas whispered, his voice thick with concern. We can't leave him here to die. Ben, the more practical of the two, furrowed his brow. We already have mouths to feed, he grumbled, his usual gruffness returning. Another child would be a burden. But the sight of the helpless child tugged at his heartstrings. He knelt down, his rough hands gently brushing away the snow from the baby's face. The baby's eyes, a clear, vibrant blue, blinked open, meeting Ben's gaze with a look of innocent curiosity. A wave of tenderness washed over Ben, dispelling his initial reluctance. We can't leave him, Thomas, Ben said, his voice gruff but firm. We may be poor, but Mary will surely take him in. Thomas nodded, a silent agreement softening his features. Together. They carefully scooped up the baby and the cloak, the weight of their decision settling upon them. 
the starlit sky above seemed to wink their approval as they started their journey back towards the village, their hearts filled with a newfound responsibility. Years melted into decades. The baby, named Leo by Ben and Mary, grew up healthy and strong. Unlike the villagers, whose hair was dark as ravens and eyes as brown as earth, Leo possessed an ethereal beauty. His hair glowed like spun gold, his skin the shade of polished ivory, and his eyes mirrored the deep blue of a summer sky. Yet, a darkness lurked beneath the surface of his beauty. As Leo grew older, a sense of arrogance and entitlement began to bloom within him. He reveled in his unique appearance, mocking the other children for their ordinary looks. His heart, once filled with childish innocence, became hardened by a sense of superiority. He found no compassion for those less fortunate, taking pleasure in their suffering. One scorching summer day, Leo strolled to the village well, his golden hair glinting in the harsh sunlight. Leaning over the cool well water, he admired his reflection, a smug smile playing on his lips. His vanity knew no bounds. He preened, adjusting his cloak the shimmering stars catching the sun's rays. Suddenly, a heavy hand landed on his shoulder. It was Ben, his face etched with a deep sadness that Leo had never witnessed before. Leo, Ben said, his voice thick with disappointment, why are you so cruel? We raised you with love yet you treat others with such disdain. Leo scoffed, his smile fading. They deserve it, he retorted. They are dull and plain, while I am beautiful. Mary, her kind eyes clouded with concern, joined them. Leo, she began gently, her voice laced with wisdom, 